Welcome back to DHN Crypto. It's your boy, Wade Teamer, as always. Happy holidays to you. This is a very important stream, just like the one from Wednesday. So you can pretty much go and batch these together. Simply, what we're focusing on in this one is the G20 roadmap for cross enhancing cross-border payments. Shift 4 was supposed to work, but it didn't. The focus is, though, if you're holding projects like XRP, Stellar Lumens, Algorand, Quant, XDC, coins that focus on cross-border payments, you're going to want to stick around for this, okay? Now, we do this every year because the FSB and G20, they published this report on cross-border payments because in 2020, which we'll break down here in a moment, they put this roadmap forth in order to bring about a change to the payment landscape. And I'll tell you, a lot of it has to do with blockchain and DLT. So let's just jump right into it, guys. You see, I got the slides going. Little background information. That's what we're going to start with. Oh, by the way, as you come in, make sure step on that like button for us and share the stream. So that way other holders of payment coins can get this information. Now, the FSB coordinates at an international level. The FSB, of course, the organization putting forth this report, they work at an international level of financial authorities and international standard setting bodies to develop and promote effective regulatory, supervisory, and other financial sector policies. Its mandate is set out in the FSB charter, which governs the FSB's policy making and related activities. So this is, like they said, high level situation. And good morning to uh, Mr. Tom, Mr. Thompson, excuse me, and Casper Holstein. Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, pull that back down. But key areas of this report include the facilitating uh, increased adoption of payment versus payment protocols, access policies to key systems, central bank liquidity frameworks, and extended real-time growth settlement operating hours, as well as APIs for payments. What this all means is this report is focused around the crucial components to cross-border finance. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because it'll make you aware of the direction of the market and if the asset that you're holding is moving in that direction. Now, important facts that you need to know. FSB in coordination with the Committee on Payment Market Infrastructure and other relevant international organizations and standard setting bodies, like I said, developed this roadmap in November of 2020. The roadmap is a comprehensive high-level plan that is designed to adapt to the cross-border payment landscape as it evolves over time, involves a wide variety of stakeholders from the public and private sector. That's why I always highlight that every time we see it in a news story. But the biggest and most important fact here is this roadmap has 19 building blocks divided into five categories. Again, 19. All right. That's a very important number. 19 keys. Exactly. Now, of course, we're not going to break down all 19 of these building blocks. I highlighted the ones that I think are going to be the most important and the most crucial going forward. But as you can see, we have public and private sector commitment, regulatory and supervisory oversight, existent payment infrastructure agreements, data and market practices, new payment infrastructure and agreements. That includes the DLT, blockchain related payments, things of that nature. Now, the building blocks here, these are the ones that I have highlighted. We're going to start with building blocks two through four. This means uh, number two is implementing international guidance and principles. Number four, align regulatory and supervisory frameworks for cross-border payments. Now, when I read this, what it comes out to me as this is the uniform set of guidelines that's going to govern crypto assets around the world. OK, I found this report here from PwC. Very interesting. And also PwC is a VeChain partner. Uh, Global crypto regulation report for 2023 published on the 19th. This is fresh, fresh game for you. First place we're going to go to, though, page five. This paragraph here gives us a small picture of the current crypto regulation landscape as far as around the world. 
European Union is at the most advanced stages, like I always tell you, finalizing the new Markets in Crypto Assets Regulation, or MICA. In the UAE, Dubai authorities are setting up the world's first authority solely focused on virtual assets. Switzerland has integrated one of the most mature regulatory frameworks for digital assets, allowing market participants to gain certainty on the legal and regulatory treatment of their projects and intended activities. So leading the crypto regulatory landscape right now, Europe, the United Arab Emirates, and Switzerland. So projects with very strong relationships there are going to be very valuable. Now, we're going to jump to page seven. This is a very interesting chart here because it's it zoom, we zoom out the map a little bit and we get a more broader picture of the exact directions that the regulation is moving to. So as you can see here on the map, we got regulatory frameworks, AML, CTF, uh, the travel rule, and stable coins used for payments. That's my favorite category, right? But the circles mean that everybody, they're currently in discussion. The paperwork is being put together. Check mark, of course, means everybody's good to go. And this pencil here means that the draft, the bill, just needs to be signed on. So knowing that, I, I want to focus on these stable coins for a second. You see, the United States, they're already ready to put pen to paper. So is the United Kingdom. Australia, Austria, they're in discussion. The Bahamas, already ready to go. Canada, also in, uh, in discussion when it comes to stable coin regulations. And then we also have Gibraltar. Hong Kong is also discussing stablecoin arrangements. Now, that one's interesting because Hedera Hashgraph has a very strong relationship with the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, several commercial banks over in that area. And then we also have Italy. And you can see here, they're already ready to go with their AML CFT uh, uh, regulations or codes or whatever. That's what the deal with Algorand and their Banco... Italy, Banco di Italy, if I'm saying that right, excuse me, if I'm not, excuse me, but the relationship with the Bank of Italy and Algorand for the, it was the bank insurance. That's what that means. Okay. And we can also see that they're discussing stable coins as well. So in a sense, with Algorand being one of their premier blockchain partners in Italy, as well as VeChain, can't forget about that. Both platforms have stable coins. Algorand doesn't have a native stable coin, but Algorand is on USDC. So there's that, right? And then we got Japan here down at the bottom. They're just ready to go, period, across the board. They were already on ISO messaging way back in 2014, guys. Now, next page we're going to jump to is page 12. The reason why is because they give us more alpha on the stable coin situation, specifically here in the United States. In July of this year, CPMI and the International Organization of Securities Commission issued a final report providing clarity on the application of principles for market uh, for financial market infrastructures to stablecoin arrangements. Specifically, the report proposes guidance on aspects related to governance framework for the comprehensive management of risk, settlement, finality, and money settlements. The report excludes considerations for stable coins denominated in or pegged to a basket of fiat currencies, also known as multi-currency stable coins. These will be considered in the future as more details come out. So what that means is they are, they prefer stable coins that are not backed by other versions of fiat, commercial paper, things that, that, that are not solid. They are in favor of stable coins that are either backed one-to-one -one with cash or a physical real-world asset. This is, again, coming down from the United States. And there are so many um, reports <laughs> from the U.S. that also coincide with this. And then we also had that $1.7 trillion stimulus package that passed over the evening. That also falls in line with it too. But the last page I want to show you with this one is page 22, continuing here in the United States. This orange box is where I want to draw your attention. Expected regulatory announcements, interagency guidance on liquidity risks managed by the Fed, OCC, and FDIC, expected next year, 
interagency guidance on finder activities by the same groups, also expected. And at the same time, stablecoin legislation expected in due course. So with this information, guys, what we have here is the stablecoin narrative is going to be at the forefront of the payments innovation. And with that, it's going to bring the uniformity to crypto regulation that the world is pushing towards. So that's why that's important, guys. Now, we got some comments, got some more people coming in. Good morning, Thomas Lee, Landy Flowers, ICP Millionaire, uh, and Marcus Cook. Oh, yeah, most definitely, man. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see what this question is here. Yes, they should. I, I, I make sure I optimize all of mine for replay. YouTube has been doing a lot of things, a lot of changes for 2023, guys. That's why at the end of the stream, I'm also going to make an announcement. We're going to be taking a little break for the rest of the year. You know, that's just to get the bearings, charge up, things like that. But let's keep driving, guys, because I don't want to take any, uh, too much of your time. It's the holiday. It's Christmas. You know, got stuff to do. But this information is important. Specifically, building blocks seven through 10. Seven, promotion of safe payment corridors. Eight, KYC identity sharing. That's obvious. We're talking digital identity here. Increased adom adoption of payment versus payment and improving direct payment access. Now, when I read those building blocks, the first thing that pops up into my mind, and we've talked about this a lot this year, is the FedNow Instant Payment Service that we know is getting ready to launch in May. Now, it's interesting because as more details come out, they really define what this, um, what some of the use cases are going to be for the FedNow payment system. Now, initial use cases for instant payments powered by the FedNow service, noted by uh, Stan SQ, included account to account transactions, digital bill presentment and payment, disbursement for insurance claims, and other timely payouts. Underlining Underlining the latter use cases is a highly requested feature of the FedNow service called Request for Payment. The reason why they want that is because when you're dealing with cross-border payments, guys, remittances from one country to the next, they're, all, they're currently fragmented. And the reason for that is the bank in one country doesn't have the same hours of operation as the bank in another country. Perfect example here. People were tripping out a couple of days back about finance pausing withdrawals for a few hours in a certain location. CZ went on CNBC and explained what actually happened. The thing was, the people that were trying to withdraw, the bank that they were going through in their country was not operating. So people just had to wait until the bank opened up. A lot of people kind of overlooked the scenario that he presented, but that's exactly how all of these exchanges operate. Binance, Coinbase, KuCoin, Hubie, Crypto.com, doesn't matter what you're using. That's how they're going to operate until the systems are put in place, which is the transition that we're going to, that changes the, it's, and that's what the payment versus payment means. And there's also delivery versus payment. These two things are going to change the relationship between banks and crypto companies in the sense where now the crypto company will serve the same functions as the bank, which will allow them to have settlement instantly. That's what that's that, that's where we're kind of headed when we talk about the relationship between exchanges and banks. Right now, another gem I want to share with you guys. They talked about requests for payment, absolutely foundational to their instant payments value proposition. Right. I'm going to show you this token here. The protocol for payment requests. It's called Request Network. Now, I've done one video about this coin a while back. The price action may not have been the most impressive, but what I want to show you is the technology. I think this token is going to be a juggernaut simply for this very reason. As soon as I get a uh, strong internet connection, guys, that storm is coming through over here. And um, I don't know if you guys have, you know, if you're going through it, you know, best wishes. We're going to make it through this together. It gives a, uh, uh, it does give us a white Christmas. So there's something to appreciate about that. I don't think it has snowed on Christmas in the last two years or so. But 
Crest Network is an open network for payment requests. It allows anyone to create, store, and access invoices in a universal decentralized network. That use case is very crucial to what the Fed now just gave us. So keep an eye out for this token. Request Network, REQ is the ticker. Right now, the price is about $0.08. Cents. Imagine that, guys. But let's jump back over here to... Uh, Let's get into the next set of building blocks. And we see we got some more people coming through. My fabulous tortoise life. Thank you, brother. Dope name. Dope name. Uh, AKB, shout out. NC in the house. Marcus Cook, thank you again for the super chat. Appreciate that, brother. Happy holidays again to everybody coming in. And don't forget, step on that like button if you find in value. Now, Building blocks seven through 10, we just covered. We're going to jump forward to what I think are the most important ones, okay? 11, 13, 17, 18, and 19. Exploration of central bank liquidity, interlinking payment systems, multilateral platforms, global stablecoin arrangements, and international dimensions to CBDC designs. Now, that last one is what we're going to lead with, and it's going to bring up a story that we are all too familiar with. SWIFT delivers on plan for a global CBDC network. Now, in putting this together, I went back and reread this story. I reread this story. There's a couple things that we missed, guys, and that's that, that I'll take blame for that. But with everything going on in the space, you know, you got to do what you can. But the financial messaging system has made progress in cross-border crypto transfers. Partnering with Chainlink, the entities announced a proof of concept that will allow the International Bank Cooperative to transfer cryptocurrencies across most blockchains. The collaborative POC allows SWIFT to instruct token transfers across nearly every blockchain environment. Chainlink added that this would allow financial institutions to become blockchain capable without confronting high upfront costs and development challenges. That right there, very crucial aspect to keep in mind. If your blockchain can reduce the cost of business coming to the blockchain, they're going to be they're going to go far in the utility era. Now, this last two sentences here. Swift is taking part in what some believe to be a revolution in cross-border payments. The messaging system, along with EBA Clearing and the Clearinghouse, announced that they are to deliver the immediate cross-border payments pilot service. This pilot will use existing real-time payment systems in the U.S. run by the Clearinghouse and RT1 in Europe and uh, EBA run by them. The connection between RTP and RT1 delivers a new way of moving money across borders. So, as you can see here, guys, that SWIFT network was not just for the integration of crypto into traditional finance, but it played a crucial role in the interlinking of financial systems. This can also be looked at as one of those multilateral platforms, right? But it gets deeper. Wait, hold on. Because I found this this morning. International Monetary Fund, a multi-currency exchange and contracting platform. This again is fresh, November 2022, guys. And we're going to jump down to page six here, okay? Because this is the, the most juicy portion. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a PDF so that way I can drop it in the comments under these streams. And that way you guys can read through the documents that I share with you. But you can see here, this paragraph shows us that this is a direct response uh, result from the mandates coming down from the G20 and the FSB. The need for better cross-border payments has been long recognized by the international community. In October of 2020, G20 finance ministers and central bank governors endorsed a roadmap for enhancing cross-border payments. They then go to describe the 19 building blocks. But in response to this, they have two objectives that they look to carry out with this specific paper. One, to encourage further discussion on how multilateral platforms could enhance cross-border payments and to eventually stimulate the provision of key international public goods and infrastructures. I read these words to just remind you, this is about to be a global shift worldwide, okay? Remove all the geopolitical back and forth that we may see in the media right now. What's happening in the world of finance that dictate, dictates the direction of the world, 
everybody's coming together. Everybody's coming together. Now, with these objectives in mind, we're starting right here. We present in this paper a specific vision for a multilateral exchange and contracting platform. The design of this platform improves cross-border transactions in two dimensions. First, it has a design that centralizes payments and settlement and integrates functionality needed for cross-border transactions, namely to streamline compliance, reduce costs of foreign exchange conversion, and better manage financial risks. Second, it leverages new technologies to better organize payments and associated financial markets. These new technologies are common ledgers with unique states programmability that allow for automated financial contracts, i.e. smart contracts, and encryption, which ensures privacy and, and alleviates underlying obstacles to trade. So what we have here is the IMF getting ready to build out a platform for cross-border payments that incorporates smart contracts. If you go out to Europe, you'll see that their biggest focus is creating a payment system centered around DLT. Here in the United States, the focus seems to be blockchain-based payment systems. So the main reason, guys, that I like to put this agenda 2020, these agenda videos together is because if we're investing for utility, we need to know which direction that the markets are moving. I was fortunate enough to stumble upon this information early, to, uh, the end of 2020, as a matter of fact, shortly after they set these arrangements in place. But my level of understanding at the end of 2020 was nowhere near what it is now. Now I see how these things connect, guys. There is a, the thing, the, the, the biggest piece here that I can leave you with is that What's being altered are remittances. That's why they want to bring these stable coins in because it's going to make remittance payments cheaper. When remittance payments are cheaper, businesses can then do uh, can exchange money faster. And that's what they want as we move closer to a digital society. Now, there are some other things about this. And it's interesting because this morning I was having a discussion with uh, Mr. Reggie Middleton. And they're OK, the convergence, right? When these banks come in and this stream, again, the information I showed you is evidence of banks moving in and the direction that they're moving. They're going to have to deal with that patent problem. They're going to have to because there's no other way to scale it. These are the pieces that are being placed, guys, and it's going to really set the, the tone for 2023, in my opinion. So that's why I shared this with you guys. Again, we can just do a quick recap. I'll pull these up just so you can refresh your mind on really what's going on. Central bank liquidity bridges, that again is going to tie into what the IMF is doing, also what SWIFT is doing. And then if you look even deeper, JP Morgan at JPM coin, it's focused on providing liquidity to central banks. There's a lot of discussion going on about that right now. So the reason why central banks are looking to build liquidity pools is to reduce the cost of those remittances. That's why they lead this report with reducing the cost of cross-border payments. It's a focus on it, enhancing cross-border payments, excuse me. But I love to share these with you guys because, again, if you're holding payment coins, this is what you need to look for. Now, that's really all I got for that presentation. Uh, as you guys bring it in, as you guys, you know, digest the information, of course, leave any questions you have down in the comments. Now, I do want to state that, yes, this will be the last stream for the year. Um, I do like to take the last week of the year just to get rest you know what i'm saying recharge the batteries i usually like to start it on the 21st that's what we did last year but the way things went this year it was weird with christmas being on a weekend it almost didn't feel the same i don't know if anybody else notices that but i remember when christmas is during the week it's all over it's all over the place <laughs> but on the weekend it's just it maybe it was just me but maybe it's just me so let's see we got a question here 
Kevin Lake, are you talking about or leaning into DAG, XRP, and Quant? Yes. As a matter of fact, there is another building block. I'm glad you brought that up. DAG. There's another building block on this report. And again, once you access it, you'll be able to read it. Building block 14 focuses on data, uh, identity data registries. Constellation DAG, and I'll pull this up again, builds those. Okay. And what's interesting is that in the, there was a, a, a bill, infrastructure bill. No, well, no, not infrastructure. This one was the annual defense budget from December of last year, right? December 2021. And there is a large portion of that bill that focuses on building data repositories on a DLT or blockchain structure. Constellation DAG is the only token in the space that has a connection to the U.S. Air Force and military branches. So I am currently not holding DAG. I may be taking a massive L on that, but I'm already committed to my other plays, one of them being XRP. But I say all that to say, Diag, XRP, Quant, ones you want to keep an eye out for. So, yeah, very good. Very good comment. Appreciate that, guys. The end game is control of intellectual property. Yes, you are very correct, Mr. Cook. And I think they're going to do that through NFTs, right? So with that, though, you have to then introduce new forms of regulation, legislation around the utility aspects to NFTs. It's going to be big, man. It's going to be big. Let's see. Do it all. Number one says, thanks a million, my brother. Shalom. Righteous. Thank you. But yeah, guys, that's uh, it's really I just wanted to I love to share that. Like I said, I love to share this information. Because, again, the utility era for us, it's very close. Okay, this FTX thing, it opened up a can of worms that that probably needed to be open. Probably needed to be open for us to get to the next stage. But, like I said, guys, this stream is going to be a bit shorter. I do appreciate everyone that came in, joined us today. Uh, If you're getting ready for the holiday season, best wishes to you. I know we are. Uh, All the toys have come in and (laughs) the kids are um, going crazy, getting ready to open them up. And we also got some cooking to do. Uh, Got a pretty decent menu, pretty decent menu. And this is our first official year, me and the missus, first official Christmas as a married couple. So I am grateful for that. It's uh, it's been a long journey, especially this year, man. It's been a long journey, but I don't want to get to, you know. What's that? Monologuing. (laughs) Monologuing. Again, I wanted to keep this concise. But like I said, guys, G20, the G20 finance ministers. Okay, and we're talking G20 nations. This includes Russia, China, India, Europe, the United States, Australia, South America. The entire world's financial minds are moving in this direction. So. If the cryptos that we are invested in are moving towards that same direction, that's where our money needs to be going. So with that, guys, again, thank you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Uh, We'll get back in touch at January 1, top of the year. So happy new year as well to all the digit hustlers worldwide. I want to thank you again for an amazing 2022. Got some big goals for the plan for the next year. And I always want you to keep in mind that if the money is digital and we see that it is, so is the hustle. All right. Now, with that, I want you all to have a blessed holiday, an amazing, prosperous, abundant, supercharged, very exciting. Nobody stressing you out. And if that one family member come through that try to just just keep the door locked. OK, it'd be all right. <laughs> have a blessed one. Thank you. And I'll see you guys in the next stream.